Hello everybody. Today I'm going to spend some time talking to you about my very first book. It's called The Physical Trumpet Pyramid. And instead of telling you the story first, I'm going to start with what's in the book in case that's what you're really here for. But if you're interested in the story, you can keep listening, keep watching, and we'll get to that too. Basically, the book is a philosophy about trumpet exercises. And what that philosophy is based on is sort of a trumpet version of Paganini's quote when he said, each day I rebuild my technique anew. And the idea of the routine is that we're going to become absolute beginners all over again. We're going to start at the very beginning. Start with some air. Start with some, after the air, we'll do some lip buzz and mouthpiece placement and some mouthpiece buzz. Until we get to the end where we're doing triple tongue and double tongue. And each step that we take through this process rebuilds our technique for that day again. And so what we're looking at in detail is a very specific order to do the traditional rudiments in. And that's something I want to stress at this point, is that when I created the physical trumpet pyramid, I wasn't practicing my own exercises. I was practicing the same staples that everybody else practices uh, the Chickowitz exercise, stuff out of the Arben, stuff out of the Schlossberg, stuff out of Herbert L. Clark. And I was combining all this stuff together. The only thing that I was practicing at that point was my original lip slurs, because one of the reasons I ended up doing this is because of the lip slurs. I didn't want to spend that much time doing lip slurs. I didn't see value in spending that kind of time doing abstract exercises that don't really help that much. So my exercises are different and maybe we'll talk about that a little bit. So <clears throat> the order of the exercises is what's most important, not necessarily the exercises that I wrote. And that's the main message that I want to get across to the students when they take lessons with me. And in fact, I consider it a, a, a great honor when I catch up with old students and I say, I ask them, how are they doing? And they'll tell me, well, I still practice your books. I still practice the daily routines and I still practice the physical trumpet pyramid structure. But they say stuff like, but for the articulation, I do this instead. And for the, the, um, let's say, the, the triple tongue, double tongue, I do this instead. They swap out bits and pieces of the exercises while still maintaining the physical trumpet pyramid structure, the order. And I consider that a huge compliment because that tells me that they understood the concept, they understood the philosophy when they left and could do something with it personal to themselves. So yes, it's, it's a very specific order. Let's go through that order real quick. We start with air exercise and then lip buzz and then mouthpiece placement and then mouthpiece exercise, mouthpiece buzz, then long tones and the long tones today we add to the long tones uh, lip bends and we do uh, a little bit of pedal tones at the end of the lip, uh, at the end of the long tones. Then from there we do what I call tonalization studies. That's a scale study. Then from the scale studies we do lip slurs. My my original lip slurs. Then from the lip slurs we go to pedal tones. Separate from the long tones. And then from the pedal tones, we go to articulation. And these articulation studies are scalar, but they, the, what, we're look, what we're working on is the tongue slur patterns. Just like these are derived from the Clark articulation exercises on 
the front pages of the uh, characteristic studies. I've reordered the studies and I've made them expand and go through all the keys, but it's based on that original Herbert Clark. Then we do some interval studies that were sort of based on the Arbin study, uh, interval studies. And then we end the routine with either triple tongue or double tongue. Actually, nowadays we kind of do both. I like to finish the routine with some lyrical studies, but that's not part of the official physical trumpet pyramid order. So, basically, what I'm saying is if you do the, your exercises in that order, there's huge benefit for that. I'm saying that I believe that if you do the, the long tones before the scales, it's going to be better than if you do the scales first and then the long tones. I'm saying that if you do the articulation stuff towards the end, it's going to be better than if you do them first. So that's, how the, the, that's what the philosophy is. And it's very similar to a Reinhardt thing. And I, didn't, I never met Reinhardt. I have barely read his books. I've read them. What I, what I mean by barely is it was a long time ago. I didn't have my own copy. So, uh, but Reinhardt's students have told me that what I teach is very much like his stepping in drills or walking up drills. I don't remember exactly how they word it. But there is a Reinhardt thing that he taught that is very similar to what I teach. And I find that validating. I don't find it uh, at all uh, to be disappointing whatsoever. I actually find that extremely validating. So, now that I've told you what the book is, let me tell you how it came to be. When I was in college, I went through some, I was practicing what I consider today to be too much. And I wasn't resting enough. And I had a horrible semester. And at the end of the semester, I decided that if it was going to hurt this bad, I had pain. I had pain in, the, in my jaw, in my, in my gums. I had pain in my head from, from playing so much, the pressure, the air pressure. And all along, I was getting worse, not better. And I decided if it was going to hurt that bad and I wasn't going to make that much progress for what I was putting into it, that I'm just going to quit. This was right bef that was at the end of the fall semester. I had uh, a Christmas vacation coming. I put the trumpet in the closet. I had officially quit. I got in my car, drove to the East Coast. I was living in El Paso at the time. I drove to the East Coast, spent some vacation time there, drove back to El Paso, and when I got home, there was a message for me. A mutual friend had a son who died in an accident. They were having a jam session, and I thought to myself, I can't not do this jam session. So officially, I'm not playing trumpet anymore. But I went to the jam session, and I was always told that for every day you take off, it's going to take two to get back. And I was playing so terrible at the end of that fall semester. Two weeks have passed. And, you know, the idea of being that bad and having to play and I'm just going to end up being that much worse because it's been two weeks. So I didn't even warm up. And I get up on stage when it's my turn to, to um, play in the jam session. And I'm, we're, we're getting ready to, to play. They count off the tune. There's the, the introduction. And then I start playing the head. And the deeper I get into the head, the more I realize that I sound better than I've ever sounded before. And the rest of the night was an absolute joy. Up until that point in my life, I hadn't had that much fun playing the trumpet. 
And what that did is it caused me to question all of the dogma that I had consumed up until that point in my career. And I decided because I, my mouth had hurt so bad that I decided I was going to build from scratch. Now remember, I'm in El Paso in the 80s. And I wasn't, there, there wasn't a lot of money. I couldn't just go to another town and, and take a lesson with somebody. I couldn't call someone. That's what people used to do back then. They would call long distance and, and have a phone lesson with somebody. But, you know, back in those days, a hour-long phone call was like 75 bucks. And I just didn't have that kind of money. So I was cut off from the people who, who could have helped me with this. And I was pretty much forced to just use common sense to figure it out myself. And I spent pretty much the rest of the, the, the year experimenting trying this, trying that. And I took the same kind of notes that a scientist would take. I had everything detailed, um, very detailed uh, notes that I took about what happens if I do this, what happens if I do that. And I came up with the physical trumpet pyramid at that time. Now that would have probably been just forgotten after I became a better player, except that I thought I was going to go into the army. And my concern was, it was so soon after the, uh, the, the changes that I made that I thought I was going to forget all of it. So taking my notes, I wrote down a to-do list for myself that I would follow when I got out of boot camp. That to-do list ended up being the Physical Trumpet Pyramid book. I ended up not going into the army because of my ears. I am legally deaf. And, but now my, my approach to playing trumpet has now been structured. Now remember, I'm like 23 years old when I wrote this. And so when I look back at this, I'm thinking, that was a miracle. There's no way, because the, the, the physical trumpet pyramid system has benefits to it that I, that I hadn't planned. There's, there's benefits to doing these exercises this way that it was impossible for me to have the kind of foresight to plan that ahead of time. So after that, I moved to Houston where I'm now, I went from teaching 10 to 15 students a week to over 70 students a week, which I don't recommend, by the way. But you, you know, here in Houston, uh, the school lessons pay so badly that you have to do a lot of them. Most of my friends who teach in the schools, I don't teach in the schools anymore, with one small exception, but that's, that's something different. Uh, to teach here in Houston, you have to teach a lot of students for the price that they're uh, paying at the schools to make a decent living. So I actually teach here at home now. Um, but I wanted to share this new way of, of practicing with my students. And I started off by just writing stuff out for them. And that was just taking up most of their practice time. And, I mean, not practice time, lesson time. And I decided I was going to, instead of writing it out and all that, I was going to just start writing a book, a self-published book that I actually just went to places like Kinko's and got the copies done. So the problem with this book, it was a complete failure. I think my, my idea was is if I shared with them all this text, because it is a mostly a textbook, um, if I shared with them all these concepts that they could build their own routine the way I built my own routine, of course that was a failure. I know that now. I didn't know that when I was like 25. So after uh, figuring that out, I went straight away to another book 
the Daily Routines book. Now, the Daily Routines book has since been my best-selling book. And the reason it works so well is instead of, it's the opposite of the physical trumpet pyramid. Physical trumpet pyramid is for people who want to understand it. And if you know anything about teaching, most of the students don't care about that. They just want to know what to do. So the second book was taking all those concepts from the physical trumpet pyramid and writing them out for the different students I had at the time. And I was just blessed at the time to be teaching students of all levels. This was in the late 80s, early 90s. I had absolute beginners. I had junior high. I had high school. I had uh, college students. And I had also professional students every once in a while. So I wrote out these uh, routines, seven different routines. And I called it The Daily Routines. Still one of my best-selling books, the best-selling book. Um, and I was so ashamed of the Physical Trumpet Pyramid book that I actually just put it away. Later, people, when I reference, because I do say on The Daily Routines that it's based on the Physical Trumpet Pyramid, and, and people started asking, what is the, daily, uh, the, the Physical Trumpet Pyramid? They want to know more about that. So in, I think around 2000, 2003, I rewrote it. And it's meant today to be more of a teacher's guide. So obviously we don't sell a lot of the physical trumpet pyramid books because compared to the daily routines, that's not something that people are really interested in. But there are people that want that information. And, you know, with the, the whole print-on-demand thing, why not have the book? It's not like uh, it's taking up uh, inventory space at the warehouse or something. It's not happening like that. So this is a great opportunity, you know, to bring those less uh, popular books back, right? So that's what we did. And this is actually the third edition of the book. And it goes through all of the different exercises and, and gives you ideas of, of how to do the exercises in the best way that will help you uh, get the most out of the exercises, out of the Daily Routines book. It really is meant to be done, read, and used with the Daily Routines book. You can, you can get some information out of it, if you don't use my materials. But I think the best way to use it is in conjunction with the routines. So, yeah, so now it's a teacher's guide. And if that's something that interests you, I think people are more interested in the story than they are in actually buying a book. The story is actually a very interesting story, I think. Some people have, have really been... I don't know, influenced by the story. I think I talk about the story also in the book, at the beginning of the book. But that's what it is. It's basically a philosophy that I figured out using common sense. And I actually do believe that the Holy Spirit was with me in that process. So even though I'm calling it uh, uh, common sense, it was what was made sense to me at the time. And I do believe because of, the, because of what has come out of it and how young I was at the time and how ignorant I was at the time, the power of the book is inexplainable without adding a spiritual component to it. So I do believe that the Holy Spirit was there with me, uh, helping me discover these things along the way. And so now today, the, the physical trumpet pyramid is the foundation of all the physical stuff that I do on the instrument, both on my teaching and my, my performance. And you know what? The stuff, I, I can't even, I'm not even going to go through all the, the miraculous things that are attached to this book. 
but I'm even today still, I'll give you just one example. The new book coming out soon, the One Range book, is, I mentioned the physical trumpet pyramid in there, but I can tell you that the One Range wouldn't even be possible without the physical trumpet pyramid. Same thing with uh, another book I have coming out in the next couple of years some, somehow, if I just got to get the time to work on it. I call it the accumulative, the art of accumulative practice. And that book would not be possible. The, where my mind is today on, and how I practice and how I teach practicing, I could never have gotten here without what I learned from, from the physical trumpet pyramid. So that's what it is. If you have any questions about this book, feel, please feel free to ask. And uh, so far, I think I'm batting a thousand answering everybody's questions here on YouTube. So please, if you won't have any questions about the book or the physical trumpet pyramid or anything like that, just let me know and, and we'll, we'll get to that. And so other than that, that's what I have for this, this video. God bless you and we will see you on the next one. Thank you very much.